you wouldn't believe how long it took me to set this up. Absolutely ridiculous. Um, and also you may be wondering why I look like shit and that's because I was drunk last night. Um, hence the reason for this. But anyway, let's get on with the video. Um, welcome to another video. And I very recently on Instagram got a question from someone called Alan Pilkington and I'll drop his Instagram um, on the screen and down below so you can go and check it out. Now he asked me if I would make a video about shooting Astro with a kit lens and then also how to go about doing basic editing of an Astro image. So firstly, Alan, thank you very much for your question. And if anybody else wants to drop me some questions, some ideas for some videos, that would be great. So drop it down in the comment section of any video or drop me a message on Instagram. Um, I'll link my Instagram again, as always. But anyway, let's get on with the video. now. The kit lens that I have is the um, 28 to 70 Sony 3.5 to 5.6, I believe it is. Yep, uh, and this is uh, the kit lens that came with my Sony A7 III. Now, this is quite widely regarded as being a shit lens, so it will be perfect for talking about some astro for it. So what does a kit lens mean for your Astro? It most likely won't be as sharp as a prime lens and it also most likely won't stop down as open an aperture as it would do on a prime lens. So what that could mean for your shots is that there could be more grain in there um, or they won't be as sharp either. But don't let that put you off. It is still totally possible and I'll show you how in this video. So let's talk focal range and settings first. Uh, you want the lens to be as wide as possible and you want the same for the aperture. So for my lens, this is the 28 millimeters and f3.5. So the 500 rule will determine your shutter speed. This is how you find out what shutter speed you should set the camera at. Firstly, put in the camera in manual. So the 500 rule, it just means that you divide 500 by the focal length of the lens. So remembering to um, include or adjust for any crop factor that you may have um, if you are not shooting on a full frame lens like I am. So basically with a 500 rule, divide that by 28, that gives you 17.8 seconds shutter. Uh, so for me, I'll put that on a 15 second shutter what that means is if you go anything longer than the 17 seconds you'll start to see streaks in the stars so they won't be sharp you'll start to see them move and you may be going for that effect but for the purposes of this video we're not going for that effect next then is you need to make sure that we turn off autofocus on the camera and uh, you don't want the camera to hunt for focus while you're taking the shot so to find focus you can set the lens to infinity or you can use either the live view on dslr cameras or just punch in on the brightest star that you can find in the sky and then adjust your focus so that it's as sharp as possible you want it to be just a tiny dot so the next thing we need to do is how to determine the iso so you can try with your iso at 1600 to begin with and then take a test shot if it's too dark we need to raise the iso um, if it's too bright then lower it uh, you can use the camera's exposure meter as a guide. Uh, I normally know that if my camera says that it's one stop underexposed, then I'm gonna be pretty near to where I want the shots to be. If the ISO ends up being really high and your images have a lot of grain, then it may be a good idea to stack the images later using stacking software specifically for Astro or Photoshop, but we'll probably get into that in another video. Next then is the white balance. Make sure that you're shooting raw anyway so that the white balance isn't, doesn't matter and you can adjust it in Lightroom. Um, but if you are shooting JPEG, then you need to make sure you get the white balance right in camera. And also, if you are shooting JPEG, you'll struggle to edit them later. So it is best to only shoot raw. Now, it doesn't really matter what white balance you choose. You just need to make sure that it's set to a certain white balance so that it's consistent throughout all the shots. You don't want it to be changing the white balance as you're taking through shots. While you are out, then just try and shoot as many shots as you can. So the more the better really. Um, and that way you can either stack them, you can do time lapses with them. Um, if you don't get the first one right, then the more you've got, the better chance you have of getting a decent shot. So I would recommend an intervalometer. Okay, now that we're done with the how, 
let's get into Lightroom after we've taken the shots and I'll show you how I edit them. I took these shots uh, just the other night and that was with this kit lens and it was the first night seeing the Milky Way this season uh, and I'm actually really happy with how they've come out. I'm, I'm used to shooting really wide angle so I use the Samyang 14mm and actually I really liked the 28mm focal length. Uh, I will definitely be doing it again because the it, it compresses the background a lot more than on the 14 mil. So you, you get more of that Milky Way punched in. I'll definitely be using it again. Um, what I would say as well, that if you can do, save up and get yourself a prime lens. So like the Sony 28 mil F2 is a really cheap and really good prime lens. So I'm shooting on that now and I will definitely be using that for more of my Astro in the future. But whatever you've got, you can still get some good shots. So anyway, let's jump into the computer. I'll show you how. Right, bang, we are in the computer. So first thing I am going to do is reset this image, and make sure that there's no other edits on here at all. And then, as you can see, this is the image straight from camera. It's a little bit orange, but that's because I set the white balance to be cloudy, which will make it more of a warmer image. And the very first thing you do before you do anything is go down and make sure that the profile corrections are applied. So I'm just going to scroll right down to the bottom. Because it's a auto lens, um, it's feeding information to the camera so the camera knows what lens it is. So the profile's already already enabled on this, but I'll also click remove chromatic aberration. I've never noticed it actually does anything, but you never know, worth a try. Okay, so after you've done that, I pretty much just work my way down from the top. So we just scroll right to the top and then the first thing that I do is change the white balance from as shot to auto to see what it looks like. So usually I'm happy with it but sometimes I'm not so you can play with the white balance a bit but actually I'm happy with how it comes out as auto so I'm just going to leave it there. Then all I'm going to do is work my way down so the first thing I'm going to do as always is play with the shadows. So I'm going to up the shadows then I normally always lower the highlights. Now I only lower it to a point where it doesn't make any difference anymore if that makes sense. So you, when you lower the highlights after a certain point it doesn't actually make the image any darker so just to a certain point do I lower the highlights. Then I'm going to play with the whites after this so I'm going to play with either lowering them or hiring them. Because the stars are white it's going to help to in increase a little bit of the whites in your image. I virtually never touch the blacks and I virtually never touch the exposure or the contrast unless I've shot the image and it's really really underexposed at which point I will up the exposure but normally just playing with the shadow slider works for me. Next then I pretty much always add a little bit of clarity but it's very easy to go too far on the clarity slider so only put in a tiny bit of clarity we can add more later. Next then I find that it's always uh, best to add a bit of dehazing to your astro images again with all of these sliders don't go too far if you notice that there's something been done to the image if you can tell an image has been edited then it's been edited wrong so only a little bit I do the same thing with the vibrance I up the vibrance I normally then just decrease the saturation just a little bit but again each of these are to preference and to taste Next then, let's play with the tone curves. I always raise the blacks, um, but what I also do is just slightly pull it out as well, so you can see that it changes it from um, adding to the blacks to also adding a little bit of contrast there. Then what I also do is also add a midpoint and drag that down slightly to add more contrast. And then I add a point at the highest point of this peak so that I can push a bit more back into the highlights, which will bring out those stars a bit more. So next one then is your HSL sliders. So we're getting really technical at this point. After you've done the main um, editing corrections, you don't really need to do any more, but we're getting into the sort of more advanced at this point. So if you're interested, follow along. If not, you can probably export it there and you'll be quite happy. But right, so the first thing is the hue. This changes the color of the colors. So what I always do in every one of my shots is I change the hue of the green and I make my greens more yellow. But in this image, as you can see, there aren't any. So apart from that, in an astro image, there isn't really any reason to play with the hue. Um, again, it's a personal preference, but there really isn't any reason to play with the hue. Now the saturation. 
I use this to play with what normally will be a certain level of light pollution. So you're either wanting to decrease the saturation to remove the light, some of the light pollution in your shot, or if you've got quite a lot like I have here, then you might as well work with it. So what I'm doing is increasing the saturation just a bit on the oranges, the yellows, um, and I quite like it. You can also have a play with each of the other sliders, like if you play with a blue slider, you'll take out some of the color of the sky. Now, for the luminance, always raise the blues. And as you'll see on this, it, the blues are the sky and the stars, and so the luminance of the stars of the sky will always pop out if you up the blues, so I always do that. Also on the luminance, we can use them to remove some of the light pollution again. So I normally reduce the luminance on the orange, the yellows, sometimes the reds. Um, also, if you get a little bit of color casting from changing some of the other settings, your purples and magentas that are being pulled into the sky, you can remove them a little bit here, but it's not making any difference in this. So there you go, you can see the before and the after. Okay, so the next one down is the split toning. Again, you really don't need to get into this sort of stuff. It's, it's slightly more advanced, but what, what I like to do sometimes, not all the time, is I like to put a bit more blue into my highlights and then just slightly, just slightly increase the saturation on that. So what you'll see is that will be the brighter parts will turn slightly more blue. But what you also always need to do if you're playing with the split toning is put the opposing color into the opposite so if you're putting blue into your highlights you want to be putting a warmer color into your shadows so here i'm just going to put a slightly warmer color put some oranges into my shadows and again tiny tiny amounts you don't want this to be obvious and there you can see with the saturation you can also play with the balance to make it slightly cooler slightly warmer again if you're if it is noticeable then you've gone too far Okay, now with the sharpening, what I always want to do on this is hold down the Alt key and slide across on the masking. That way it shows you what you're going to be sharpening and you only want to be sharpening the stars and nothing else really because otherwise all you're going to do is add noise into your image. So the next part then is the noise reduction. Now I generally don't really like to add any noise reduction. As you can see here, there's the noise, and you can see what the slider does as I push it further and further along. So if I push it all the way to the top, you'll see what it looks like. And for astro images, adding noise reduction just ruins all your stars. As you can see here, it just gets rid of them all. So really, you want as little noise reduction as possible. But if you have got a really grainy image because you are shooting on a kit lens, then you can play with just a little bit of noise reduction. I will have a video out soon that will show you how to stack in Photoshop so that you can remove some noise um, and add a bit more detail. But anyway, moving on. We're basically at the end of it now. Um, there's the, the transform. And I'd always just click auto and see what um, Lightroom does with it. So it will try and level your horizon. Actually, I'm not happy with that. So I'm just gonna go back to how it was. And then pretty much the very last thing on the way down is I always add a little bit of vignetting to my astro images, just a tiny bit. Again, if you can tell there's a vignette, you've gone too far. So that is basically everything. Um, and then again, you can go into as much depth as you want. You can keep keep going on and on and on as much as you want, but that image is probably fine there as it is, but I'm gonna carry on anyway. I'm gonna show you a few more bits and tips. So the first thing I normally do is grab a gradient and then I want to put a gradient onto the sky. So as you can see there straight away, what I normally do is up the clarity straight away. Again, don't go too far because it just introduces a shitload of grain, but add a little bit of clarity into the into the sky. Then what I normally like to do is add a little bit more whites. Again, just a little bit more whites and a little bit more highlights, and then that will make those stars pop a bit more. I like to then counteract that with a bit more contrast to make the sky darker. Again, don't go too far. And then as you can see at this point, it's making the sky a little bit too blue. So you could play with the temperature. You could add a little bit of warmth back into it, or you can make it even bluer, up to you. Uh, and then saturation, what I find if the sky is a little bit too blue, rather than playing with the temperature, I just pull a little bit of saturation back out of it again. You could at this point add a bit of noise reduction, but I'm not going to. Next thing then is the radial filters. And this is how I normally add vignette onto my images. So I'll put a radial filter right in the middle 
I will then go down and turn off the invert and then just drop the shadow slightly. So that's pulling blackness into the rest of the image and focusing on the center there. What I also like to do with radio filters is stick another one just on the sky and then bang can add a bit more clarity, can add a bit more highlights, whatever you want. And then I also like to do the same thing for the foreground sometimes. So I pull it across and add a bit more clarity into my foreground just to make it stand out a little bit more. Okay, next one then to play around with even more is where the light pollution is. I'm gonna stick another radio filter on and then I'm just gonna add noise reduction to that part of the image because I do find that the noise is a bit distracting in that part of the image. Again, with a, as with everything, don't go too far. Okay, we're almost there. I'm just gonna now show you what I sometimes do with a brush. So I select the brush tool and then just start painting on, on the detail of the Milky Way so that we can bring it out a little bit more from the image. So I'm just painting on the bits that you can already see. And then we can work our way through and play with this stuff again. So up the highlights maybe, up the clarity maybe, up the saturation maybe. Um, again, always, always be really, really careful. Don't take anything too far. You can very easily add an outline just like that. And you don't want to add an outline. Again, if you can see it, it's obvious, then you've gone too far. I'm, I'm really hammering that home, aren't I? Um, what I sometimes I like to do is add a little bit of purples into the Milky Way to make it just pop a little bit more. And all I'm doing is I'm just playing around, whatever you like the look of. But again, as I say, you can do this all night. You can just keep going, keep going, keep going. So it's sometimes best just to call it a day. I sometimes like to edit an image, stop and leave it overnight and then come back the next day and see if I'm still happy with it and if there's anything that I might want to change. One last bit then is to accentuate some of the stars. So some of them are already popping out quite a lot. Let's just accentuate that a little bit more by adding a little bit more with the brush tool. So we're gonna to go to the brush tool. We're just gonna up the highlights and up the exposure a little bit. And we're gonna make a really, really small brush and we're just gonna click on a few of the stars and then all that'll do is add a little bit more of an outline around them, make them pop out a bit more. Again, nothing over the top. And bang, that is it. Um, I forgot to film an outro for this video, so here we are. Um, that is how I shoot and edit my um, Astro photos using a kit lens. So I hope this was helpful. Uh, thank you very much, Alan, for the question. And if anybody else has some, submit them down to me down below or in my um, Instagram. Um, thank you very much for watching. I'll hopefully see you again. Take care.